previously on mesh analysis. So we have the circuit diagram and we need to solve for the mesh currents I1 and I2. We already know that there are two meshes and therefore we have two equations later. Okay. Next is we already set the direction in a clockwise, clockwise direction. Next step is to perform KVL per mesh. So let's analyze per mesh. So let's look first at the first mesh, mesh 1. So KVL at mesh 1. So this is the first mesh. So we have currents I1 and also another current I2 that acts upon the first mesh through R3, the 3 kilo ohm resistor here because there are currents I1 and I2 flowing in this resistor, which is also a part of mesh 1. So again, for KVL, KVL is what? The summation of V rise equal to the summation of V drop. So this consists of the voltage sources. This one consists, consists of the voltage drop per resistor. So next is, so for V rise, there is only one voltage source. So we have five volts. Five volts equal to, so what you need to do is uh, determine the uh, resistors inside mesh one. So we have one kilo ohm, three kilo ohm, and two kilo ohms. Therefore, you need to add it up multiplied by the current flowing in this mesh. So I1, so positive 1K plus 3K plus 2K times I1 minus negative 3k i2. So where, did, where does this come from? This one. So again, at mesh 1, there is a current that also acts upon it through 3 kilo ohms, which is i2. This one is negative because the dominant mesh for uh, currently is mesh 1. So the dominant current for now is the current i1. And look at the direction of i2. So current of I1, current I1 is uh, flowing from this point, going this point. Current I2 flows from this point, going up. So it is a contradicting current. It contradicts the flow of I1. Therefore, this one is negative. Next, we just have to add it up. 1K plus 3K plus 2K is 6K. 6 kilo ohm times I1 minus 3 kilo ohms times I2. So that is our first equation. Okay. Next, look at the second mesh. So KVL at mesh 2. So let's have the summation of V rise equal to the summation of V drop. So as you can see here, Okay, before we proceed, we have current I2 at mesh 2. And still, there is I1 here that acts upon the second mesh through the resistor R3. Okay, so you need to remember that we will have two unknowns later on. Okay, so next, V rise. So the only voltage source that we know here or we can see here is 7 volts. So we have 7 volts equal to, next is, uh, let's have all the voltage drop. So, okay, let's add all the resistances inside mesh 2. We have 4 kilo ohms plus 3 kilo ohms plus 5 kilo ohms. So multiplied by the dominant current I2. So right now we're, we are in mesh 2. Therefore, I2 will be the dominant current. So, I2. Then, we will subtract the effect of uh, 3 kilo ohms multiplied by the current I1. Okay? This one is negative because the current flow of I2, our current dominant, uh, I mean, currently dominant current is, uh, it flows from this point going this point. So, essentially, in R3, so current is from this point, this point, to this point. So current I1 is flowing from this point to this point. So it is a contradicting current. Okay, I1 contradicts the flow of I2. Therefore, it is negative. 
Next is, you just have to add all the resistors here. 3K plus 4 plus 5. So we have 12 kilo ohms. Okay? So 7 equal to negative 3 kilo ohms times I1 plus 12 kilo ohms times I2. That is our second equation. Next. So summary, we have this first equation. 5 equal to 6 kilo ohms times I1 minus 3 kilo ohms times I2. Second equation is we have 7 equal to negative 3 kilo ohms times I1 plus 12 kilo ohms times I2. So this can be solved by system of equations. It can be elimination, substitution, or you can use reduced row echelon form, etc. Whatever you want. Okay. But for me, I'll be expressing this in matrix form. Okay. And you can do this in your calculator and it will yield an automatic result. Okay. You can use your equation mode in your calcu. So just plug in the values. So 6K, for the first equation, we have this coefficient, 6 kilo ohms, and then negative 3 kilo ohms, and then the constant 5. Okay. Second equation, we have negative 3 kilo ohms plus 12 kilo ohms, and then the constant uh, value 7. So this one's I1, this one's I2. We're solving for the mesh current I1 and I2. So if you plug this in your calcu, you will yield 0 0.0012857 amperes, or we need to express this in milliamps, so 1.29 milliamperes. Next is we have 0 0.0009 amperes, or in milliamperes, it's 0 0.9047 milliamps. Okay, so we already know the currents I1 and I2. Okay, if you wanted to know what are the voltage drop per resistor, so you just have to multiply the resistance times the current. So you have uh, for V, okay, voltage for 1K, 2K, 4K, and 5K is EC, right? Because there's only one current flowing through that resistor, that given resistor. So you just have to multiply it, and use ohms law. But for R3 or 3 kilo ohms, you need to what? Subtract the current from the other one because the current is, uh, what's this? They are contradicting. Okay, 3 kilo ohms multiplied by I1 minus I2 equal to 1.16 volts. So the voltage drop here has a polarity of positive and negative. Positive, negative, VR3, okay? So higher potential, lower potential. So I1 flows from this point going this point. So higher potential going lower potential. So it follows the polarity of the voltage drop across 3 kilo ohms. While for I2, the current I2, so current I2 flows from this point, from this point going this point. So this point to this point. So it contradicts the polarity provided here. Okay, should be this one's positive, this one's negative, higher, lower potential. Current flows from this to this. So it follows the polarity, therefore, I1 is the one which is positive and I2 is the one negative. Okay? Because this one contradicts the polarity provided for R3. Okay? That's it.